Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya, and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tools and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I have guest Sam Smeltzer. Sam's a human resources representative and medical Qigong healer. She served as an HR manager for several years in the retail industry and later transitioned into healthcare, where she developed and implemented company-wide educational programs for leadership and staff. Currently, Sam is utilizing her skills in medical Qigong and human resources to help shape the workplace we know today. Her pursuit of finding the root cause of workplace disengagement has led her to a path of merging spirituality, Eastern medicine, and workplace wellness to create the capacity for deep healing our organizational cultures. Sam is the founder of the Heart Center, a business devoted to healing workplaces, She hosts the Heart of It podcast and is the author of two books, HR Intuitive and Workplace Healers. Welcome, Sam. I am honored to have you on the show today. Thank you so much, Tanya. It's an honor to be here. So we are going to be talking about the healing practice of Qigong. So let's start off with what the heck is Qigong? (laughs) Yeah, that's a great place to start. So If we just break down the word Qigong, which is spelled Q-I-G-O-N-G, so in case you're trying to Google it, uh, that's it's always helpful to know the spelling. But Qi is basically energy, and Gong means master. So when we're thinking about it, it's mastering energy. Um, And most of us are familiar with Qigong in the form of movement, similar to like Tai Chi. Yeah. Yeah, so it's very similar like that. And that's the way Qigong was meant to be, was a self-cultivation practice where you're personally caring for your body. I am a certified medical Qigong therapist, which means that I can help with interventions on a table, typically, I mean, um, typically, like like what we're familiar with in the energy work realm, like with Reiki. Mm -hmm. However, it's applying the Qigong theory, which is a lot of essentially Chinese medicine. So Qigong is also one of the main four branches of Chinese medicine. So it's like acupuncture without the needles, but just using energy work. That's funny because that's how I explain EFT tapping, acupuncture without the needles. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's always helpful when people don't want to get stabbed with needles. It's It's a major appeal. But yeah, you're working the meridians, you're working the energy flow. Um, and, and EFT, you know, is, is closely aligned with acupressure. So it's just similar, similar thought process. We're getting those meridians and those, and the, the energy moving. Yeah. So when you are working with someone, are you actually physically touching them or not? Or is it similar, more similar to Reiki where you're just kind of moving your hands over the body? Explain a little bit about what it looks like. (laughs) Yeah. For the most part, it is uh, not touching the body. Now, every once in a while, we will uh, lay our hands on with the intention of having a more intense chi emission into an area. So for example, like people who have problems with their knees, because there's tons of people who do that, they'll actually feel more comfortable having the warmth directly from the hands laying on the knees and feeling that pumping into the system. But for most, we are about two to three inches away from the body and working on the energy field that way. Um, We have a couple practitioners that integrate all kinds of other modalities with it. So you will have some that have acupressure. I do study acupressure. So every once in a while, I will work those points in. Um, But yeah, it's really like, I tell a lot of people it's like Reiki on steroids because we Uh don't do a lot of touching. I don't do a lot of touching. And from my background and my bio, you kind of, you know, I'm an HR practitioner. We're taught not really to touch. Yeah. (laughs) So that was a really interesting kind of shift for me. And I still kind of struggle with that. So it really has to be going to maximize the impact for me to choose to touch a body. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and there is a modality called healing touch. And I know that I started to see that more prevalent in the healthcare system, which I was really excited about. So similar, is it similar or different to Reiki where Reiki, you utilize symbols and you visualize things? Is is it similar to that or is it different? Um, there are some similarities. So there are talisman and symbols that you can imagine in visualization. We do that a lot, but really at the core of at least medical Qigong. So there's different branches of Qigong. There's some that are focused on spirituality. There's some that's focused on martial arts and the form that I study is medical. So we really focus on how energy is connected to the physical body 
um, and the emotional body. So what we're watching is emotions, we're watching um, the organs. So we're actively like, when we're dipping into the body, it's common for us to say, hey, we're gonna work on your kidneys today, or we're gonna, we're gonna work on your liver, there's stagnation in the liver. Uh, and we're actually looking at the meridians that are running from those organs and trying to identify kind of the pathway of the disease, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's it mostly we're talking from an energetic standpoint, not really from a physical, how we know Western medicine kind of disease. Yeah. And so when you are working with someone, are you being intuitively guided as to where to work or is there a process or a structure that takes place? So when we work in one-on-one -on -one table sessions, we do a hook up, which basically we connect to a divine source. So it's partially my energy, but also greatly assisted by the divine. And um, depending on the practitioner skill sets for me, I am an intuitive. So I am intuitive, intuitively guided and I work with guides and angels um, and they help me out with all of this because I'm not, I'm not a healthcare practitioner. And so even though I have the general knowledge base, you know, if someone comes in and they're talking about things that are beyond me, um, you know, there's things that happen on the table and that's really because of other people, other guides helping me out, yeah. <laughs> not really me being all knowing because that's not what happens in this space. So it's really like you're kind of being the vessel for that energy to come through, whatever. It's very similar to, to me when I'm doing muscle testing or Absolutely. even quantum healing hypnosis. It's very similar. I'm just acting as a vessel and yes. allowing that chi that energy to, to flow through me. And I love this because when I first booked this show with you, I thought we were going to talk about physical, you know, the actual movement Qigong. So I am yeah. like, whoo, this just blow, blew my mind open a little bit because I did not realize that medical Qigong is so different. And I love yeah. this because these are things that need to be incorporated uh, more in the healthcare system, in our workplace. And so you are working, being having that HR background and then moving into your medical Qigong healing, you are starting to kind of bridge these two worlds. And this is fascinating in itself. So tell us briefly how you came about to even learning or even understanding Qigong, being an HR yeah. representative. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the abbreviated version is I had a corporate job, just like everybody. I ended up in healthcare and I had a really great job. It checked all the boxes and I kept finding myself, I guess, becoming disengaged, which is a buzzword. Um, and I didn't understand why, because I was an HR practitioner. So we're supposed to be the makers of engagement. And if we can't stay engaged in a workplace, then what does, what hope is it for the rest of the organization? Um, and so I really decided to venture out on my own to try to find this magical solution to employee engagement because I was young and this was almost 10 years ago thinking that I was going to be this. Yeah. And we used to have to do surveys all the time for yes. employee engagement. <laughs> yeah. And still had no answers to it. So, um, and so I went out on my own and I've kind of fell into a path, which most people do of this self-healing and self-improvement and looking internally and went to psychology and sociology, spelled some time with some spiritual teachers um, and they were work like there was really cool kind of modalities that were there but they weren't everything that I was looking for it just seemed very complex to try to add it into the workplace um, and at the same time as I was healing I realized that my personal sensitivities that I shut down as a child because they were so overwhelming they started to come back so at the same time I was working with a holistic coach who was trying to help me you know figure out how to stop seeing seeing things that I didn't want to see or understanding what was happening because it was just kind of opening like a whirlwind. And she actually mentioned, you know, I really think you just need to study something around energy work to get a handle on this so that, and then figure out what you want to do with it. Like, that's what the decision we all have to make is what do we want to do with our intuitive skill sets? Yeah. Um, and so while I was trying to figure that out, because I had no idea, you know, I'm an HR practitioner. We don't do any of that stuff in the corporate world. <laughs> Rushy, let alone uh, in healthcare too. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, and I actually went to our local holistic shop. They had an open house where they were offering like $20 tarot readings. And there's a local tarot reader that everyone raves about. And um, I sat down across from her. And of course, the first card she pulls is like, oh, you're trying to find out what's next for you and looking for education. And I was like, yeah, where am I supposed to go? And she said, Qigong. And I went, Qi what? Like, 
Qigong. You're looking for Qigong. And I was like, okay. So you've never heard of it before. (laughs) No, I couldn't even like pronounce it. Like I was trying to find paper, like trying to attempt to spell it. And after she finished my reading, I got up and she put her hand down and said, what are you going to do next? And I said, I'm going to Google it. And she said, that's not how we do things here. That's not how we find teachers. Give me your card. And uh, Monday, she goes in touch with me and said, there's a teacher that's not too far from you that everyone highly recommends. And that February, I walked into that classroom with nurses and acupuncturists and um, chiropractors. And here I am, this HR professional that's like, I don't really even fully understand what this thing is, but here I am. And it completely changed my life. And it started to provide these nuggets that I was looking for. And it gave me a place to use my skill sets. It just, it was that missing puzzle piece that I needed to just make all of this come together. That's so neat. So Sam, can you do Qigong on yourself similar to Reiki or is it always just on someone else? <laughs> um, so you can do Qigong on yourself. Those are the movements that everyone's familiar with. So they're known as self-cultivation practices. And those exercises are doing the same thing that we do on the table. So the table I always call is like lazy man Qigong. Like <laughs> when you're too tired to do it, we can do it for you and regulate your energy, but you can do all that That's yourself. That's a good slogan. Your when practice. you're too tired to do it, we'll do it for you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I get a lot of my clients, but um, yeah, so you totally can. And that's, that's the form that it was meant to be was that everyone takes care of their energy. You know, when it started in China, uh, it was a way for people to care for their energy system, just like you would care for your physical body. So you would go work out. And then if you cool down with some Qigong exercises, you're regulating your emotions and clearing thoughts and just getting rid of all that stuff that's heavy on us that we accumulate throughout the day. Yeah. And so I know when I lived in Florida, I would see them doing Qigong on the beach or what I thought at the time was Tai Chi. So how different is Tai Chi to Qi, to Qigong? Are they very similar? Or are they, is there some differences there? They are very similar. Um, and really what it comes down to is the intention behind the movement. Tai Chi is a little bit faster at times where Qigong is going to be just a tad bit slower on the speed scale because you're really tuning internally and, and focusing on flowing the energy. You know, one of the most basic forms of Qigong is breathing in and out, you know, breathing in energy, exhaling out what doesn't serve us. Um, and even my personal Qigong practice is a standing meditation for 20 minutes. So there's no movement that's really happening. It's really about tuning internally and, and listening and activating your personal kind of energy, which is very similar to what you do when you do self Reiki on yourself. Like, I feel like it's kind of that fusion there. Yeah. Or even uh, a yoga practice, right? So Qigong is like a practice. Am I correct in saying that similar to yoga? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that one sounds like mountain pose where you're just kind of, you just kind of stand there and yes, strong yeah. and rooted into the ground or even tree for that matter. You know, I mean, it's kind of funny how they're all very basic, how they're, how they're, they labeled. are. <laughs> yes. And yeah. So, yeah. Tree pose. Yeah. Very yeah good, tree yeah. pose. Yeah. And so <laughs> Sam, how have you incorporated this into the workplace? How have you been able to, to kind of bring this Eastern medicine into kind of a Western society. (laughs) Yeah. So it's been, um, it's been an interesting journey that, uh, you know, taking in there, it's kind of pioneering because it is very, um, it's from an outside kind of thought process. And for me personally, my background is in leadership development. So I'm working with leaders of organizations and proposing that this is the solution to a lot of the issues that we're having in the workplace. Now, uh, one of the gifts that 2020 and the pandemic gave us was burnout, which I know everyone sucks and hates, <laughs> but it gave me a really nice window of opportunity. That was a package of coal. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But for uh, a Qigong practitioner, you know, we can really turn somebody around energetically from burnout because burnout is kind of accumulation of large amounts of stress and emotion. And so even us putting somebody on a table, we could do a couple of table sessions and they were seeing the person be like who they were before the pandemic. And that was showing the power of the energy work. So we got a lot of traction there. I worked with a lot of referrals from people when you couldn't retain somebody, you thought that they were going to just leave or quit or have to go on medical leave, they would send them to us first and see if they could see any kind of difference and we would give them tools. And it was really interesting because we would have 
some Qigong exercises are a little funky, but these people are openly doing them in the work environment and their supervisors would embrace them because they would see the difference between when they wouldn't do their exercises and when they would do their exercises. Um, and so that's how it started. Now we're trying to take it to the next level because there's people, just like with any kind of energy modality, you have to be willing to come and explore it or you have to hit a point where you need help. And so you're going to go explore whatever to get that help. You kind of hit that rock bottom place. And we really want to move forward at the Heart Center and give the resources to people before they get there. Like we don't yeah. feel like you need to get there. You know, Qigong was always meant to be a tool for health, to sustain health, not to pick you up when you are like all systems are down. Yeah. Um, and so we've been playing with that, doing um, these team interventions where we're meeting with leaders and taking them through very basic exercises that are mostly visualization based, breathing based, and having them tune into themselves personally. And it's it's been a challenge because this is a population that doesn't go inward uh, very often. And we're also taught not to do that at work. Um, but I truly believe this is the path moving forward. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a stay tuned because this is the vision and moving it in there and we are seeing progress being made, but it has been a rough journey for people um, because things are hard. They're hard right now in the workplace. Yeah, and it's so it's so different. And you know, had I had these tools back when I was working in healthcare, I was designated as the health champion. You know, our hospital system was fairly large and they would designate health champions for each of the areas. And honestly, I was struggling with burnout. So it was hard for me to even plan mm -hmm. things to help other people struggling with burnout. And so had I had the tools of Qigong, you know, I had the tools of meditation and breath work, but I do feel Qigong could have been something that I could have brought to, to my workplace at that time, not only to help others struggling with burnout, but myself as well. And yeah. so I, I kind of stumbled upon Qigong as probably three years ago personally. And I started doing it myself. I'd find ones on YouTube and just do some of the movements. And I did notice that it would help alleviate my thoughts or not alleviate, but slow down my thoughts, yeah. it, you know, that, that stress that, that, and, and even the fatigue. So how, how does it help that burnout? I mean, how can it really help that stress and what, you know, kind of, I guess, what is the, the, not really the science, maybe the science behind it, but what is, what is behind it that helps bring that stress level down? Yeah. So when we're talking about Qigong, Qigong aims to do three very specific things. So when you're doing those exercises and when you're educated, so if you are like you, Tanya, if you're if you're on YouTube and finding Qigong exercises, just learning what these intentions are behind it will just magnify them. Because when you can tune into this is what we're doing and the instructor's exhaling and breathe out and you know the intention, it's going to just magnify it. So the three steps that we're always doing, number one, we're always purging. So we're actively choosing to get rid of stuff that does not serve us. So that's thoughts, that's emotions, that's physical discomforts. We have the ability to energetically move them and exit the system. So when you're exhaling out or they're having you kind of comb through the body, you're gathering things energetically and you're releasing them and recycling recycling them into the earth. The second thing is tonification. So you have the ability to breathe in new energy, new life. This is why when you go on hikes or you're out in nature or when you're taking walks, it feels so good to breathe in that fresh air because you're breathing in earth's energy or heaven's energy and just being just totally filled up. Reoxygenating yes. yourself. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So that's number two. And the last one is called regulation, which is running actively kind of running the energy through and orbit through your system to make sure that you don't have pockets of excess or deficiency. So whenever you do an exercise, sometimes people will have a cramp or something like that. And I always say your meridians are kind of like, you know, they're hoses that get kinked up. <laughs> and like so rivers. when they're, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when they're popping open, it's not always such a pleasant kind of process. And sometimes they pop open and sometimes they get stuck or sometimes they don't get unstuck. So it just keeps building and that pressure's there. And so the regulation aspect kind of starts to shift and gather and taking that excess and help moving it through. And regulation in particular, obviously settles the entire nervous system. So because just the breath work and that kind of orbit, when we treat on the table, 
when we, when we get to regulation, everybody falls asleep. Like that's how we know that we've done our job. So you might be active during the first, the purging and the tonification. And then we run the orbit a couple of times and you're just like out for the count. And like, <laughs> we leave you there kind of incubating for a little bit. So <laughs> yeah. So the way that it works with burnout, it's removing things that don't serve you. It's actually regulating the system and then it's giving you more energy. So there's a lot of um, modalities out there that talk about that you're born with a certain amount of energy and you can't get any more. And that's a myth. Qigong is telling you that you can restore that. They're, they're saying that you can heal uh, lineages of, you know, fatigue and things like that by using Qigong to change your energy and, and move it in the right direction. Yeah. There's like an infinite supply of energy. We just have to plug into it <laughs> yeah like your background tanya like that's like yeah, you could this, just, is, this is how you plug into it too <laughs> that's right. That's right. when i heard it thought of qigong i thought i need a nature background today because that's exactly Me what people too. need to be thinking of yeah. and so sam is there a technique or an exercise that someone can do at their desk like someone you know if you're at the desk for eight ten hours a day which there were times i would be reviewing medical records and i was just and I had some ergonomic things that I could do, but is there a, like a simple technique or something that you can do yeah. if you've been kind of sitting at your desk or maybe even on Zoom meetings all day? <laughs> yeah. So one of the best ones is whenever we're talking about being tired, so that mid-afternoon kind of slump, or for me, sometimes it's even mid-morning, yeah. whenever you would go for that other cup of tea or that other cup of coffee, try tapping on the kidneys or rubbing the kidneys and activating them up. So this could just be as simple as, you know, like just drumming right behind your back yeah. and, and feeling those kind of activations rubbing them, giving them some kind of love to say, come back alive to come back alive for me. And um, the other piece is inhaling the color midnight blue into the kidneys. So that's taking the energy that you're absorbing up and then kind of programming it. So it specifically goes to the kidneys and our kidneys are linked to our primal energy source. So it's the battery. So if you think about you being like a cell phone, uh -huh. that's what's draining all day. And that's why if your lower back hurts at night, when you lay into bed, those are the kidneys saying, okay, we're done. <laughs> and then you sleep and then it boosts you back up and then you go again. And then if you feel that, that fatigue at the, in the back at the end of the day, that's all linked to the kidneys. So Focusing on the kidneys, either inhaling dark blue light or tapping and drumming on them or even rubbing them behind your back just for a few minutes. It makes a huge difference. Oh, it does. And I remember when I first started learning about energy medicine, I uh, stumbled upon Donna Eden and Donna Eden talked a lot about the, the kidney meridians. Yeah. And I started to do some of those movements and tapping my kidneys and I could feel like um, just pulse pulses kind of yes. coming up out of my kidneys. And I did recognize I would get emotional because kidneys hold fear, kidneys hold certain emotions. And so I would find as I moved that stagnant energy up and out, I would start to feel like a pressure cooker, like all these emotions would come to the surface. So I just wanted to mention that for the listeners and the watchers to be aware of that too, that you may feel a little bit of an emotional release when you start to do some of these movements and techniques. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's often, you know, most frequently people cry. <laughs> yeah. It's a response from a Qigong treatment um, or exercise, but you can also get angry. You can also start having doubt. You can also start laughing. Like I have one client who laughs the entire time that I treat them. It's kind of weird to me because I'm like, are you laughing at me? But I know it's just a energetic release. So uh, if something happens that seems wonky and not like out of character for you, I always say, just keep going with the exercise and let it pass. Like, I think most of the time we stop too early, but you want to let it, once it comes to the surface, like let it go. And if you got to cry, like cry, uh, cause once it's gone, it's, it's gone. Like, so that's, it's a beautiful thing when we can move emotions that way. It is. And I think as practitioners, I know when I see someone having that type of a response, I'm like, oh, they're moving something out. Something is yeah. moving through. And so whatever that response is, you know, I'm like, yeah, that we're moving that energy out. And so Sam, let's talk about your book, uh, Workplace Healers. So what is the role of a workplace healer? <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, when I first started thinking about this work going into the workplace, uh, I really was trying to think, how does this, the question always becomes, how do we take this and integrate it into the entire workplace because the answer is never going to be 
I mean, it would be cool to have a Qigong practitioner set up in every workplace who just somehow takes care of all the people in the organization. Or every but morning, everybody uh, does a Qigong, 15 minute Qigong. Yes. <laughs> so that's, that's the big vision. But until we get there, you know, how do we start slowly shifting the workplaces? And I have figured out that if you train, um, HR practitioners who are dealing a lot with people and even leaders on some of these techniques and they start to integrate them in the way they're doing team building, the way that they're coaching individuals, um, that is a way for us to get in. Because what I started using and I, what I didn't realize I was using my empathic and my intuitive abilities for for a long time was in my profession when I was facilitating in those, in those situations. Like I didn't conveniently know the right thing to say at the right time because uh, I'm just that good. It's because I was tapping into other things. And as I've kind of fine crafted this skill set, it's made it even more powerful and learning how to hold spaces and understand when energy is shifting um, out of alignment, how can I sh maybe shift it back? And so Workplace Healers is the book that starts to lay that foundation. And one of the pieces that's really huge about it is um, with Qigong, when we train to be a Qigong practitioner, we have to uh, we have to prepare ourselves as a vessel. We have to do the work ourselves first. Um, otherwise, we have the ability to possibly do transference, which is put our stuff into the people that we're doing work with or be so triggered by what's coming at us and only seeing kind of that mirror that we can't actively serve in the healing capacity. Or be the uh, and so sponge. workplace healers <laughs> starts the process for these individuals to start cleaning up um, themselves as a vessel, really focused on what the workplace has done to us from a trauma perspective, because there is a lot of trauma associated with the workplace. And how do I start tuning in and cleaning up at least those really erratic kind of things so that I can find my grounding and start to do these works and, and these exercises? Oh, yes. And I, I think that's fantastic. And, you know, just there's, you are so needed in these corporate environments, you know, and I can speak from many corporate environments because I worked in several throughout, you know, my last 20, 25 years before I started um, doing my energy healing business. But it, there is such a kind of a sense of the moment you wake up, you're go, 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 go till you get home. And then you can't shut down and then you wake back up and then you're doing the same thing. At least that was my experience in healthcare. And when you talk about trauma, that's exactly just, I, I even struggled with a certain cell phone ring because someone would call me first thing in the morning and I had to respond to the hospital and it started to create a little bit of PTSD, you know, in me. And, and many years after I left that job, I was at a store and I heard that cell phone ring and it immediately took me back to that moment. And so having this practice or having these ways that we can move this energy out to move these um, stuck or stagnant emotions or what it, whatever it may be, your thoughts, to be able to move them through and allow it in a holistic way, to allow it in a natural free, free flowing way is so yeah. beneficial. And this is, it's like, this is ancient practice, but it's all very new, right? It's all very new yeah. to people right now. And so we are, we're kind of people like you and I are bringing things to, to the forefront that people look at us like, you're crazy. We're talking about, but then you go to China and they're like, this is normal. You know, we've been doing this for, <laughs> for thousands of years, but in the States, it's a little different. And even other countries too, you know, we all are very different and, you know, in our cultures, but Oh my gosh, Sam, this, this is so powerful. And so you have another book, HR Intuitive. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So HR Intuitive was written when I finally was going to own the fact that uh, I am an intuitive. Um, and I think, uh, and I was listening to a couple of your other podcasts and I love that people point out routinely, like being an intuitive does not make us special. Like we all have these skill sets. It's just a matter of, you know, mastering them and allowing them to open. And so basically what that book captured was 33 lessons up to that point of how my skill sets were opening up and materializing and, and not in a way to basically say, this is how yours are going to materialize, but this is 
how it starts to happen. Like you start to see number patterns. You start to develop your own spiritual library. Like mine is weird animals show up at weird times. Um, you know, talking about angels and talking about these things. And what I found is, uh, you know, just like in this community, most of us have very similar kind of experiences and we're looking for that affirmation. And so this book was written to kind of help because my audience is a lot of leaders and HR practitioners who maybe don't touch any of these kinds of things, but they are intrigued by it. And so this was kind of my memoir, I guess, of what my awakening was to get this skill set kind of going in that that active direction, um, while also giving them things to work on for themselves as well. So it has some of the basic Qigong exercises that were really significant in my life when I was clearing out my system initially. But um, yeah, it's like three, it's 33, like little short lessons of how I kind of got to where I am today. That's awesome. And so where can people find these books? Anywhere that you, um, wherever you buy your books. So they're available all over the globe. Uh, Amazon obviously has the hardback cover. We have a special edition on our website, which is hrartcenter.com. Um, so you can order there. Um, but yeah, anywhere that you want. We also have an audiobook for the HR Intuitive, which I highly recommend. I did not read it, but a very uh, close and gifted friend of mine named Dave Shiverini, which is interesting hearing your book read by a man, but he pulls it off like beautifully. You must know <laughs> me just really well because I enjoyed listening to it. And I was like, was that my book? Because <laughs> it is just a different. totally different vibe listening. I'm a big Claire <laughs> audience person. So I love listening versus visually reading because I can visualize more when I listen. So I think there's people, a lot of uh, us intuitives are very different on how we yes. take in yeah. our energy. <laughs> yeah. So there's an, uh, there's an audio book. The audio book for Workplace Healers is coming and hopefully will be out in the next couple of months. Um, I will say they're both intuitively written. That's how I write my books. Um, Workplace Healers is a little more practical. It's it's filled with the stuff that people have been asking for for a long time, where it's, whereas the HR Intuitive was pretty much whatever I wanted to write, I was going to write. <laughs> <laughs> that was coming out of your intuitive closet. That's what I, my show that's was true. about yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly, that's what this, that's what that book was, was coming out of the closet for me, the intuitive closet. <laughs> so Sam, if, if people want to learn more about qigong or they want to find more resources maybe they want to become a medical qigong healer where do they go is there some place that you can guide them where they can learn more yeah so there's um my lineage uh there's the east coast institute of qigong which is in medical qigong in gettysburg and the teacher is ted o'brien i highly recommend he is incredible there's also a series of books by dr jerry allen johnson which you can find on amazon and dr jerry allen johnson actually just came out of retirement post 2020 so you can actually learn from the guy that was the first one who took these traditions out of china with permission and created the first curriculum here in the u.s um, so that's the lineage that I come from. And then we teach uh, medical Qigong classes now at my center uh, in our school entity, which is called the Intuitive Heart Institute. So you can find that intuitiveheartinstitute.com. And that's heart, which is hrart.com. Um, so um, yeah, you can totally check those things out. We have tons of free resources on our website at YouTube. You said that. Yeah, that's YouTube. Check them out there too. There's, There's a so bunch much there. Out there. Yeah. Yeah. And even uh, Ted O'Brien, my teacher, Medical Qigong 101, I think is his YouTube channel. Lots of great, fascinating videos. He's an incredible teacher. That's excellent. And so for those leaders out there who may be tuning in to this episode, tell us a little bit more about the Heart Center, Sam, and how people can contact you if there are leaders out there who want to bring this practice to their corporation or their industry or their business, how, how can they, how can they do that? How can they connect with you? Yeah. So, um, I'm sure that Tanya is going to probably put my contact info in the show notes so you can reach out to me directly on my email address. Uh, but just to kind of peek behind the curtain as in regards to our work with corporations, we've launched something called culture care partnerships, where we're basically doing a leadership development curriculum with your core leadership team that takes them through their own personal healing um, from an energy care perspective, but then also starts teaching them some of the skill sets on how they can start caring for the others in your organization. And then also getting to audit 
your current systems and how it's impacting the flow of energy in your organization. So I think one of the really fascinating things just to think about, you know, with all our conversation about the complexity of what makes us up as human beings. So if you take that energy and you magnify it by how many employees you have in your company, and then think about all those little energy bubbles coming in contact with each other and trying to deal with life. I mean, that's what we're talking about, trying to figure out how to navigate when we're thinking about culture. And I think it just opens up a whole nother layer for us. Um, and, you know, one of the greatest uh, toolkits and tool sets that we give is, you know, looking at emotions, you know, excess emotions are, one of the main symptoms for us to basically figure out how to uh, fix a system or identify where somebody's getting pushed. I mean, if they're all angry or they're all really happy when you give them happy hours for their liver, um, we're going to look at what's causing that excess energy to become stagnant there. If they're always wanting sweets or sugar, like that could be the spleen. So we're going to look at that aspect. And the spleen's also what articulates our desires and our wants and makes our purposes kind of come to life. So if you are having struggles with materializing that, like they're all kind of connected. So it gives these really cool kind of skill sets that are abstract. Like what Tanya said, they're super ancient and old, but they feel new today and they're a little bit outside our comfort zone. But once you kind of just incorporate them into your current thought processes, they help us kind of demystify people in the workplace and how we can help and also help the organization be successful. It really does. It's kind of funny because now it's like, had I had these skills when I worked in the in the corporate workplace, I would have been, it would have been a lot different because it's funny because now I'll be like, you know, I see an angry person and I immediately know they need to detox their liver. Like it's really funny because you can start to apply the emotion to the to the physical body and just really incorporate that in with their energetic system too. So it's fascinating to learn all these different modalities. And the neat thing about it when you're working with energy is they all just plug right into each other very, a, very effortlessly, very seamlessly. And I love that because even in my practice, when I'm doing uh, hypno, uh, hypnosis, I'm doing EFT tapping. I'm doing muscle testing. I'm doing the emotion code. I have all these things going yeah. on, you know, and now it's like, maybe I should need to involve some Qigong in there too. I could definitely yeah. utilize some of that because it, it, it really is truly all energy. And I think once we, as a society begin to learn more about that, tapping into our ancient knowledge that we, that we kind of already have, you know, <laughs> it's just remembering yeah. it. And then you know, rewiring ourselves to be able to bring that in, you know, holistically. And I noticed this when I first started to, um, when I first left the hospital that I was working at, I did notice they had invited the whole hospital to a session and it was all about holistic care. And I thought, okay, this is positive. They are moving in a wellness approached direction. And it was kind of funny because it was literally weeks before I had left, you know, but it, I felt good leaving because it was like, I do see a, sh a shift and they were changing the name of their entire uh, organization and all of these changes uh -huh. were happening, but they looked to be positive. They looked to be for the better. And so I do feel Sam that corporations are starting to incorporate more of this health and wellness into, um, into their approach, into their businesses. You know, my sister works for a sportswear company and they, they've always incorporated it. They have a gym, they have all these things, but it's like another layer when you incorporate mm -hmm. the energy into it, yeah. right? Is that how you feel? Well, <laughs> I, and I totally do. And I will say this is the first time I've ever done, and I've done a lot of leadership development work where we've tackled really tough conflict issues in workplaces where I've engaged in conflict with the leaders on, is this right? Is this wrong? And you know, when you're dealing with, like, with energy and you're having people have active releases in these kind of like team sessions, which is all brand new. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what are they thinking? But even though it's been rough, I would say, like, even though it's all great healing work, but it looks like kind of chaotic, <laughs> all those leaders have said, like, we are not stepping back. Like, we do believe this is the way forward. We're going to let people choose if they want to be involved or not, which I think you should. No one should be forced. Um, but I think it says a lot that these leaders are saying, no, I do believe that we, we've got to commit to something. We've got to do the work. So they're really pushing past that layer where it was just like, 
well, there's a gym there. Why aren't you working out? We offer a morning yoga class. We give you a meditation time. It's not our fault you don't do it. And so to really, you know, it takes an organization to really say, no, you're important. And so part of your day, we're carving it out now. And now it's up to you what you're going to do with that time when you're in that space. You can totally do nothing and check out, or you can make the most of it and really work on yourself. And let's talk about that. And then being open to suggestions about how to modify the workplace post that. Because I do think we're seeing that across the board with the great resignation, with quiet quitting. Um, We're trying to set boundaries. And if organizations are going to meet us halfway, I think we're going to, we're going to do it ourselves. I mean, the younger generation says they're going to just recreate brand new businesses with these new parameters in place. So we have to figure it out. So I think it's a, it's a very exciting time to be where we're at. There's a lot of work to do, but it's a very exciting time. It really is. And we can't run like robots forever. You know, and I, I got to that. I felt like a hamster on a wheel. It just was never, never ending. And I, I was even in a semi leadership role and I knew I had to be the example, but I was so burnt out. I just couldn't do it. And so, you know, I think across the country, there's leaders probably watching this saying, I'm burnt out too. You know, I need, I need Qigong. I need these things before I can even provide this for my employees. And so it's, there's so much that, you know, gets, gets weighted on leadership that, you know, you need to do this. You need to do this. And I can only speak that because I was in that role, (laughs) but I was also in the role of a non-leadership leadership role too. And so it's like, I could see both sides, but it really, I think half the battle is getting leadership on board, but also having them go through these your your these services as well yeah. first to be able to recharge their batteries before they can even present themselves to their employees. Yeah. And I always like to tell people like if you're not doing whether it's qigong or any kind of energy kind of care, if you're not doing it, your body an energy system is basically like a, a storage unit that's been hauling around all the stuff that you've accumulated for your entire life. So depending on your age, and then if you believe in, you know, past it's lives and, <laughs> you know, what else you're hauling with you. And so this gives us a chance to move things through. And what we always tell people is when we do Qigong or energy care, we're increasing your capacity. We're we're getting rid of some of the clutter so that you have the space to do this work. Like you're tired because you have no more space. You have no more emotional room. You have no more bandwidth. That's why people are checking out and they get numb. There's there's no more space. Like so can't take in life, not even from a joyous perspective. And so this is a way to kind of move that through and clear out and you know, if you do believe in past lives, let's clear it out so you don't have to learn the lesson again next life. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> That's right. Please. <laughs> let's not repeat incessantly <laughs> lives <laughs> and exactly. lessons. So if there's any of you out there who are listening that are struggling, you know, with burnout, with stress, with fatigue, with exhaustion, with compassion fatigue, workplace, you know, stress, whatever it may be, check out Qigong, check it out, you know, whether it's your, uh, a movement practice, like we said on YouTube, or reach out to Sam, reach out to Sam. So Sam, what is your website? Where can people go to check you out? (laughs) So it is the heartcenter.com. So it's hrartcenter.com. And we have all our resources there. All our free resources are there. You can find out about all of our sessions. We do distance work as well. So just like with Reiki, we can do distance energy work. So it doesn't matter if you're not local to the area. If you happen to be in Pennsylvania or Maryland, we are (laughs) located in York, Pennsylvania and have an actual physical center. Um, And then for corporations, we do travel and go on site and we'll take tables depending on what's appropriate for your workspace. So we we try to do our best to ease people in with the modality and not like, you know, people who haven't had energy work, they get weird when a massage table comes into a space. <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up in Western New York, not far from that area. So there's a lot of intuitives in that area, I've got to say. So I think you'd probably be more surprised. A lot of people in that area are more open to it. I was actually surprised that there are certain pockets of the country that I think people are more yeah. open to these modalities. And then there's other areas where they're like, hmm, I'm not so sure about that. But uh Sam, I really give you kudos. I thank you so much oh. for coming out of the intuitive closet and <laughs> especially working in HR because you have such a stigma on you in HR that you have to be this 
prim and proper and perfect employee yeah. and you can't do wrong. And you are actually paving a new path. You are creating a new vision, a new sense of structure for these organizations. And I just send so much energy to you and the Heart Center and to all your employees and all of you who are uh, literally out there with a machete, creating a new path in the woods. And yes. I feel like many of us are doing this and it is not easy. And there's times when it's fun and there's times when it's not so fun. And so, you know, thank you for the energy that you're putting out into the world. And thank you so much for being transparent and allowing, you know, people to, to come to you, to ask questions and just holding that space for people to learn more about energy work and Qigong and some of these things that may seem a little foreign to some people. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Tanya, for creating a beautiful platform for us to share and educate the world. And, you know, it's going to take all of us together to move this. And, and if I can be a resource in any way, like, don't ever hesitate to reach out. Great. I appreciate it, Sam. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You deserve to navigate your life as an empath in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.thesoulcafe.org.